can join me as I begin with this, uh, just a brief prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we ask for your blessings of wisdom and, and grace and truth in your teaching, and we pray that you bless all priests, deacons, bishops, entrusted with the ministry of preaching, and bless all parishioners, Lord, that they may hear only those things which are from you, that they may be edifying and bear fruit. We ask this in your most holy name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't normally do that, but I do that for two reasons today. One is I'm just still a little tired from the celebrations uh, yesterday at the picnic. And number two, I have a lot of thoughts. And so I'm trying to ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance as to what thoughts should be conveyed today. But I think I'm speaking today to something very important. Actually, I would, I don't think this is an understatement. I think this may be one of the most important messages, maybe of your life. And I, again, I don't mean that as an exaggeration. And it's about loneliness. Loneliness is such a heavy cross to carry. It really is hard when you feel it and it is so apparent to your senses and you just can't seem to do anything about it. I would like to speak to that today. I would like to offer a word of encouragement and hopefully give you something so that Not if, but when the next wave of loneliness sweeps over you, maybe even a bigger one than you can expect, you can stay on your feet. I want you to think about loneliness in terms of the scriptures we've heard today. The Lord appointed 72, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. So I want you to picture that it's like you and your buddy, right? Jack and Jill. They're the ones sent out. But then they encounter their first demonized person. And you could pick Jack or Jill. But just for the sake of order, I'm just going to say Jill. Jill gets scared. He's like, I didn't sign up for this. But wait, no, but he said, <laughs> remember what he said? He said, go out in my name and remember, heal the sick and you'll exercise. No, 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 no. I, look, look at this guy. Look at the way he's looking at us. He's foaming at the mouth and thrashing and like, oh, no, no, no. I didn't sign up for that. I'm out of here. Well, what does that mean for Jack? Now he's off in some other town where he doesn't know anyone. And he feels very alone. He wasn't expecting to go on that mission one by one. Nor was the Lord. The design was for him to go out two by two. But now he is very alone. And the question that Jack has to struggle with is, well, this wasn't the plan. So what do I do now? I think it's so important that we make sure we get that answer right. Because if not, there's lots of false reasonings that can lead us down a bad path. Because Jack feels, I am so alone. He feels so alone. It seems that he's so alone. And he may conclude that he is so alone. But in his fear, he forgot something. That the Lord gave him a promise. I am with you always. I am with you always. At every moment, in every place, wherever you find yourself, in whatever circumstances, it is a theological certainty 
And this is why I say it's one of the most important messages for us to hear. This is a theological certainty of faith. You have never been alone. You are not alone. And you never, ever, ever will be alone. We have a choice to make as disciples of Jesus Christ. Either we are going to live according to that theological truth and face our fears and our contrary feelings, or we, by our actions, even if it's not conscience, conscious, are going to live according to our fears and desolations and make our choices to escape those dissatisf dissatisfying feelings so that we can feel better. My question to you today is, which is necessary for the mission to be accomplished? The purpose of your life and the great commandment, and especially where they overlap. I don't want you, and I am striving to challenge myself not to live in a way so that when I die, I have a whole laundry list of my failures to act to resist loneliness and to be true and persevere. And then the Lord says, but Kevin, didn't you remember that I, I promised to be with you? But Jesus, I couldn't see you. But Kevin, I said, I am with you always. But Jesus, I called out to you and I didn't hear anything. But Kevin, I, I was speaking English. Well, he wasn't, but for our purposes, the translation was in English. I am with you always. But, but Jesus, it just, you should have revealed yourself sooner. It was too long. You left me feeling alone too long. But Kevin, I gave you enough words. And my word is truth. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the words, I am with you always, will never pass away. Beloved, Demas enamored of the present world, deserted me and went to Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is helpful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus and Troas, the papyrus rolls, and especially the apartments. <sighs> Alexander the coppersmith did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. You too. Be on your guard against him, for he has strongly resisted our preaching. At my first defense, In my first offense, no one appeared on my behalf. No one. No one. But everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them.
But. It's a big but. It's a really big but. You need to pay attention to this very, very big but. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. So that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. From Psalm 145 today, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. All. Everyone. Every one of them who calls upon him, he is near to all who call upon him in truth. Fulton Sheen said, Moral principles do not depend on a majority vote. Wrong is wrong, even if everybody is wrong. Right is right, even if nobody is right. I would like to modify that, given our circumstances today in this reflection, which I apologize is going long, and if you need to run to work, you have my blessing to make a spiritual communion and go on your way. I'm just going to take a liberty of sharing just a couple more thoughts. Let me repeat that. Moral principles do not depend on a majority vote. Wrong is wrong, even if Everybody is wrong. Right is right, even if nobody is right. Yet the visual is, he says, moral principles do not depend on a majority vote. Like we put our ballots in a box. I would like to modify that image, given our reflection today about loneliness, which there's certainly a clear overlap. And I want to propose that we can modify this to say moral principles, truth, and right and wrong do not depend on a caucus. You think of the Iowa caucuses? A caucus is where you, you present yourself in an area and that counts as your vote. Moral principles do not depend on a caucus. If the commandment says, do not lie, and the Lord says, okay, well, everyone kind of show your cards. What are you going to live by? Where are you going to go? And you, you go to the room that says, I believe we shouldn't lie, and I think we should act according to that. And you get in there, and none of your friends are there. Your family member's not there. Your students aren't there. Your classmates aren't there. Your co-workers aren't there. Your boss isn't there. What do you do? Well, I don't want to be in this room alone. Where's everyone else? Where's the party at? Where can I escape this feeling of being so alone? You're not alone in that room. There is one standing with you whom you cannot see with your natural eyes, but you can be certain is there with the eyes of faith. Are you going to leave him alone in that room? Because he's not leaving. Sometimes I think we need to understand and have a healthy appreciation for the fact that we will sometimes experience loneliness so heavy and so frequently that we begin to wonder if we're crazy. Like, did I get something wrong? I thought, I thought he said we shouldn't lie, but no one else apparently is believing that or putting that into action or whatever the case is. Let me give you an example. You're at work, and you walk into the break room, and everyone's around the water cooler gossiping about someone who's not there. 
And you walk in with a principle that you have always tried to live by called the golden rule. And that is if I am uncomfortable, if I would feel uncomfortable if this was happening about me in my absence, then I should not contribute to this in someone else's absence. Furthermore, I have an obligation in truth to do for that person what I would want someone to do for me if I were the person being discussed. What would I want that person to do with those moral principles? Say, hey guys, I don't, I don't know that this person would appreciate this conversation right now. I don't really know that this fulfills the principles of healthy teamwork. If it's a faith environment, all the more, hey guys, if Jesus were here right now, would any of us be blushing about the way that we're talking? Get ready to feel very lonely. Because there is a worse loneliness than physically being alone. There's a greater loneliness of standing and making that comment, hearing the record go, and everyone look up with daggers in their eyes. How dare you? call out our error. Get ready to let the scripture come to life. Let us beset the just one. He challenges our ways. He claims he's a better son or daughter of God than we. Let us put him or her to the test. He reviles our ways. Wisdom chapter 3. That loneliness is great. We need to stay true to the fact that Jesus is with us in that moment. And rather than risking disappointing all of those other people, we need to keep grounded by remembering not to disappoint him. And sometimes you'll feel crazy. Like, man, I'm the only one that seems to see this. And I feel so alone. But that will keep you true to yourself. Because you can, by the way, share all of these reflections with a non-believer and say, because they don't believe in Jesus, so you can't invoke that. But you can say, you know, you can run from everyone else, but you can't run from yourself at the end of your life. So do a favor to yourself. And when you're afraid today and your reasons and actions are being influenced by that, you're second-guessing yourself because there's so much resistance, I want you to consider what would the future you want you to do now for the future you to feel at peace with the way that you live? Not your intentions, but your actions. It's hard enough when we go out and we are sent alone and it's not according to the, pro- to, to the program. It's even worse when we have an expectation that we will be sent out as lambs among wolves and one of our fellow lambs acts like a wolf and we never saw it coming. But I want us to be careful, and this is the conclusion. Our natural antenna for something might be going wrong is more likely to guide us or to get our attention when we are alone than when we have that sense of belonging. Because we long for belonging. We're made for belonging. But we can all intuit here in this laboratory, we can all intuit that herd behavior, going with the crowd, your friends can lead you off a cliff. And that's not a good thing. We can also intuit that if we're on that path, on a path, and we're all alone, we might stop and go, wait a second, did I miss something? Am I about to go off a cliff? But notice how only one of those were naturally inclined to question our environment. In the first, everything seems to go great until it doesn't. The second, it doesn't feel right. And so we're more likely, if we are going to the direction of a cliff, we're more likely to catch ourselves. But what you don't want to do 
is unreflectively immediately conclude that loneliness is bad, and then you stop doing what is right. Because if Jesus has sent you two by two, and your companion leaves you hanging, you follow the master's words. You remember that you are not alone, that the master is with you, and trust that doing his mission will often bring about situations where you feel very lonely. But at the end of the day, you have to keep your eyes focused on that mission and what actions will serve that mission, not your personal comfort. That's integrity. And if we do not have it, the mission will not succeed. But if we put this into practice, we will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. You will never feel lonely again. Come into the communion of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come into the communion of the Church triumphant with myriads and myriads of angels upon angels and the whole communion of the saints. And I can't wait to get you around that water cooler of living water And you get to shake hands and tell stories with all the people like you who stayed true in times of great loneliness. And you can celebrate all of the grace and beauty that has come from that. And the fact that by your actions, you inspired others to be men and women of integrity too. And you can rejoice in that. (laughs) I'm going to show you in eternity all of the the wake of exponential blessing that your life brought. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share your master's joy.